Hi, this is Carrie, Christ-Centered Counselor and Life Coach with Promised Coaching. Today, I want to talk about the cost of living in captivity to sin. As I was reading my devotionals the other morning, it was talking about remembering our past and remembering what God has brought us out of and also relating that to remembering and fully understanding where our true inheritance is in the kingdom of God, which is not in this world. And I think in most cases, what happens with women who end up in narcissistic abusive relationships is that we forget the promises of God. They're forgetting what those are, or they just don't know. And so I'm going to remind you and share with you what those promises are and help you understand what true living hope looks like. Because when we get stuck in captivity and we are living in sinful situations, like with someone who is abusing us, we tend to lose hope. We tend to get so discouraged. Women get so discouraged to the point that they lose hope. And this is anyone, not just women who are in relationships, abusive relationships like this. Men, children, anybody who is living in an abusive situation, that's the enemy's number one goal. He wants to take our hope away from us. And our living hope is in Christ. Our living hope is in him. It is not in the things of this world. It is in nothing of this world. And the enemy is always at work trying to deceive us and convince us that we can find hope in things and people of this world, which is a lie. But that is what he's constantly doing. He is constantly offering us a different way. He is constantly offering us things of the world that have no value. They have no eternal value and all of its satisfaction or fulfillment is only temporary. There's no longevity in anything that this world has to offer us. So as I was reading this devotional, I was remembering all of the things that God has brought me out of and brought me through and freed me from and I was feeling overwhelmed by his grace and his mercy. And that is what I think we tend to forget about. If God's grace isn't enough for us to live in obedience to him, then we are in a dangerous place with all of his grace and his mercy in our lives. How can we not want and willingly choose to obey him. And the word talks about deliberate sin. And when we are living in deliberate sin willfully, then there are no more sacrifices left for sins. This is in the word. And so if the word is telling us that, if the word of God is telling us that, and we call ourselves believers and we bear the name of God, but we don't walk in that and we don't live in that, then we're not truly believing in the one true living God because you can't possibly, and this is something that took me forever to figure out, we cannot possibly believe in God and Christ our Lord and Savior who came and died for our sins and not believe in his word. And the only way that we show that we truly believe in his word is by living in it and obeying it. God's grace is sufficient for us. And when we believe that, then we no longer make fear-based decisions. And what I mean by grace being sufficient is that when we can depend on him, depend on his love, depend on his grace and mercy and his provision in that grace, then we no longer have to live in fear and make fear-based decisions 
based on whatever the world has to offer us, whatever lies we're believing from the enemy. I've heard all kinds of reasons and excuses why women choose to stay in abusive marriages, harming themselves, harming their children. There is no good excuse. You are not responsible for another person's behavior. You are not responsible for the sin of another human being. And you are not responsible for trying to save them or pull them out of darkness. In fact, nothing that you do can do that. Only God himself can change and transform a man's heart. But what you are responsible for is your commitment and obedience to the Lord. And he would never condone or support you living in sin. And when you are living with someone you are allowing to abuse you day in, day out, week in, week out, however often it is, then you are choosing to live under the slavery of sin. You have now left the freedom that Christ came and died for to give you to enter back into slavery. That is not what the Lord wants for you. He wants you to walk and live in freedom. And that means living in obedience to him and not in obedience to sin. A narcissistic abuser, anyone who is abusing another person verbally, physically, maliciously, does not have the spirit of the Lord in, in him. When you look in the word what the fruit of the spirit is, that person does not have the fruit of the spirit. So you can make decisions based on understanding that that person is acting as an unbeliever. And if they are acting and living as an unbeliever in disobedience to the Lord with no repentance, no remorse, and no change of heart, then you are not bound to that person, especially if you are not married. So if you aren't married and you're living with someone or in a relationship with someone who is abusing you, you need to run from that situation. And with a narcissist, he's going to do everything in his power to try and manipulate and control you into staying in the relationship, which includes love bombing you and doing all these grandiose things to try and convince you that this or that isn't going to happen again or to convince you to accept him in a way that is not of God. There is no fear in perfect love. And God is love. When we are in an intimate relationship with him and we trust him and believe in him and obey him, he is faithful to show us his grace and offer us his mercy and provision wherever we are in our lives. He is faithful to do that for us when we trust and believe in him, but when we are making fear-based decisions in disobedience to him by choosing to live in willful sin, knowing that we are doing this, then we are stepping out of that love. We are stepping out of his perfect love. We are stepping out from underneath his grace, and we are entering into his judgment in that space. And trust me, I am a living example of having received that judgment. There have been lots of consequences for the decisions I've made based in fear and not fully trusting and believing in him. So I just want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to obey the word of God that you believe in. If you bear the name of the Lord and you say you believe in him, obey his word. He has a life abundant for us in Christ. That's what he came and died for us to have. If we don't believe in that and we don't trust in that, then how can we bear the name of the Lord? How can we? God is faithful. 
to complete the work that he's begun in us. And in all the work that he's done in me, I promise you and want to encourage you that his faithfulness, his grace, and his perfect love is sufficient in your life. And you need not fear because whatever this sinner, this abuser, or anything that the world has to offer you otherwise will never give you the security, the safety, and the provision that you need. Anything about the world which the abuser lives by has to offer you will always leave you empty in the end. It will always leave you abandoned. There is nothing in it for you long term. It's satisfactions and false hope are only temporary. So remember God's grace and all of the things that he's done for you and all of the ways that he's carried you through and trust in him. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will make your path straight. Freedom in Christ is healing. It is redemption. It is a life abundant and beyond anything that we could possibly imagine or dream of. I hope this video was helpful. And if there's anything that you would like to share or comment on, I would love to hear from you. And if you like this video, please hit like, subscribe to this channel and take care.